Okay, so we're going to try to finish up everything in this video. It might go a little bit longer, but at least we'll be done. So in a previous video, we were able to get these things to show the card that we have selected inside of this selection window here. So now the next thing we want to be able to do is determine which card is first selected and which card is second selected, that sort of thing. And so we're going to go right back inside of our developer tab, go inside of our code, and I'm going to go ahead and expand this a little bit. Now, inside of the card click, we pretty much have everything the way we want it um, as far as selecting these. But there's a few things I want to do before I move on. I want to get rid of this test because that was just a test so I can see that I'm getting the right data. Okay, So I'm just going to comment that test out in case I want that information for next time. The other thing I need to do is if I play my, my movie and I select anywhere outside of here, not the start, it goes to the next stage or the next slide. And we don't want that. The user must click on the start on each slide in order to move forward. So what we need to do is we need to go to transitions. And then all the way to the right-hand side of the transitions, you see where it says mouse click here? We're going to deselect that. We don't want it advancing at all, but we want to apply that to all the slides. So now when we hit F5, we're going to click here, and you notice nothing happens until I click on the start. So nothing happens here until I click on something that actually counts. Now, if you notice when, when we were in here, inside, when we were inside of here, and we went here, and we clicked on these, nothing came up here, because remember, we commented that area out. So that's why we're not saying any, anything there. So don't go all crazy freaking out. All right, so now what we need to do is go beyond our test. So here, so I'm going to hit View Code. And now underneath this, I'm going to put the logic behind selecting a first card. So what actually happens when you select the first card? I need to check something. I need to check and see if first card variable is empty. Now, in my Start window, I need to set all of these variables that I need empty to empty and set all the other ones to their default sort of um, default value. And so here in my start, I'm going to first set the first card. That's going to equals empty. I'm going to do the same thing with the second card. And then I'm going to make my score. So I'm just going to do all of these here since I know I'm going to be using them anyway. Uh, and then I'm going to do my colors. So you see I have my colors here. So I'm going to go ahead and do my colors. And I'm going to pause the video for a second and come right back. All right, so basically inside of my start, and I like to indent these so I can know it's inside of here. So I'm selecting them all and hitting tab so they're inside of here. So I made everything that's a string into nothing. And I made anything that's an integer, like the score, into zero. And then these default colors, basically I got these RGB, and I set the RGB values. So 68, 114, 196 is a particular color. Now I'm going to show you how I got this color. So basically what I do is I go here, and you'll see this, that's the default color that I'm going to be using, that blue. So I go here, I right click, I go to fill. And then I go to more fill colors. And then basically you can see when I put my mouse over a particular color, it gives me the red, green, and blue. And all I need to do is take those numbers down and go right back to the code and add those numbers in that same order here. And that's what will give me the colors that I want. And that's how I got those colors. So now let's go and write our logic for the picking of the card. So. I'm going to start this off with a comment saying selected. At this point, I selected um, the first card. And I could say if, if selected first card. Now, that's going to be an if statement. So it's going to be if the first card is empty which it is, we know that. But if it wasn't, that means it's not the first card. So you see the logic? If, it, if the first card's not empty, that means it's the second card. 
So, but if the first card is empty, then we can go ahead and do everything inside of here. So, if it is empty, then I'm going to say the first selected card equals selected card will equals this card. I'm going to push all this in so that way it's not confusing. Now I'm going to go ahead and take that selected card and I'm going to put the name of the card in there. So like A, B, C, or D or whatever inside of that card. And I'm going to do that same thing with my active, um, my active slides. So I'm going to go ahead and type here active presentation dot slides and I'm gonna call upon slide number two and then I'm gonna call upon the shapes and then I want a particular shape and that's gonna be my selected card so that's why I took those letters out in a particular way so I can call upon this using that variable. And I'm going to say text frame dot text range. And that's going to equal the selected card name. And I'm going to do the same thing with the RGB. I'm going to pause this for a second. Ah, I'll just type it out here. So, so I have my active presentation dot slides. You know this routine by now. Two dot shapes. And again, I want my selected card because I'm changing the color this time. And I don't want the text, I want the fill. And I want the four color. And I want that four colors RGB. And now I want that RGB to equal one of the colors that I, I have up here for when it's selected. So I have this one here is called selected color, and it is also an RGB. So I'm gonna put that there. Now, once I do that, I'm gonna go ahead and proclaim that the first card, and I want to make sure, even though I know that VB doesn't pay attention to case like it's case insensitive it doesn't really care what case you use it doesn't check the case it makes everything one case anyway i'm gonna i'm gonna i'm gonna be careful and go ahead and make whatever card that i get into lowercase by using l case and then sticking the selected card in their name so i want So I want that selected card name to be lowercase there. So that's if I select the first card. So we should see some results in this since this is already hooked up to a the A cards. So there's one thing we're missing here. We need our end if here. So I'm gonna put that end if right there. And and it needs to be balanced with this if. So I want to make sure that I put my if and my end if there because you'll run into an issue. I normally like to do that right off the bat. Somehow I think it got erased. But I normally like to put my if and then my end if and then I write whatever's going to be in between here so I don't run into any problems. All right, so let's see if this works. I'm going to go back here. I'm going to hit F5 and then when I click on the first A because that's what it's hooked up to right now, there it is. Now if I click on this, it shouldn't work because this would be the second one. And that's perfect. That doesn't work. Now I'm going to click on this one first next time to see if that works. And it does. This we got to turn this back to blue when we when we come back. You, you know, it's still red because if I hit Escape, and you know, it's still red even though my application isn't running because it's actually editing the PowerPoint. So we got to put that stuff back to the way it was when we exit out of uh, when we hit exit out of our PowerPoint. So that's going to be a little bit more involved because really we want to reset all of our stuff 
when we hit when we hit start, we want everything to restart. So I think what we're going to end up having to do is filter through all the all the shapes and then make them reset. So we're going to go back to our code here and we're going to go down here. Let's make some space. And we're going to create a new routine called sub reset all shapes. Now inside the sub reset all shapes, actually I already had, yes. So I knew we were gonna use these shapes here. All right, so within those variables, what we're gonna do is we're gonna do what's called a for each. We're gonna loop through the presentation. And so we're gonna say for each. And if you don't understand this, don't worry about it. Just go ahead and type it out and I'll explain it later. SLD in active. dot slides uh, and then I want to go ahead and end this uh, and the way I do that is I hit next SLD like that so whatever I put up in here it's gonna go through my presentation and it's gonna grab all the slides every single slide now inside of here I want another loop and that's gonna be for each again and it's going to be shapes and if you remember up here I have this shapes here okay so for each shape inside of SLD dot shapes and then I'm going to close this I'm going to say next shape Okay, so I have this one here looping, then I have this one looping over all the shapes here. So now I'm gonna ask the question, because I don't want this start shape to disappear. So I'm gonna say, if the shape dot text frame dot text range equals start then and I'm gonna end that if so if if the shape is start I'm gonna do what I want to do in here but actually I want to skip the start so instead of saying if it is start I'm gonna say if not start then I'm gonna get all the other shapes so if it's not start, then I want to take the shape and I want the text frame to go first the text range, text frame, that text range, and that's going to equal nothing. I'm going to make that equal nothing. And then I'm going to check to see. So let me put this inside of here. And now I'm going to make another if statement inside of here. And I want to see if the color had changed. So I'm going to say, if shp dot fill yes we'll do this dot fill and then we'll check the four color and we'll check the RGB if it was selected color remember that selected color we had then I want you to do something I'm gonna end the if So if this shape is for color is the same as the selected color, that means it was once selected, then I'm gonna take this shape's color, the shapes.fill color here. And I'm gonna put it back to the default color that I set up here. That way when I go back, it'll automatically um, turn back from red to the default color. So this reset shape should work for us. Now we gotta figure out where we need to put this. I think, well, we already knew we were gonna put it up inside of the start, right? So 
we'll go ahead and put that inside the start right underneath right here we'll put a little note reset shapes so let's see what happens here also um, you notice here this is also filled in so I'm gonna wanna clear this out too and I'm gonna wanna I don't want this one cleared but maybe this one could be cleared. So I'm going to address these separately. So after I clear everything out, you'll see what I mean by this. Let me hit F5. I'm going to run this. Now look, everything is clear. The score is gone. Everything is gone. This is clear. This is clear. If I click on this, you know, that's the first one, so it can't do the second one. But as you can see, I didn't really want that cleared. I want this one cleared. But... um we're going to have to do that inside of the right after we clear everything we're going to have to go ahead and set it again and so um i'm gonna pause the video for a second so what i did here is because uh we're going to be using the selected you know to tell people whether they got it or not i made sure i set that back to the default color even though we're not changing it yet and then i went and set the score i set that lbl score to score and then I went and set the selected frame, which is this one down here, to nothing. So if there was some text in there, I wanted to refresh it. And then we have our next frame. So all this is in the start menu. So when I go ahead and run this, as you can see, all of this is here, right? So we should see score in here. Make sure. Yes. We should see score in here. We should see this change back. I hit F5. I hit start. Perfect. We have score there. And this is changed back and this is all clear. So every time we play our game, whether I do this or not, and I go back and run my game, start will reset everything for us. We're well on our way. All right, so I think this video has gone long enough. We're going to continue what we're doing right now in the next video and uh, continue uh, on if we press the second button. So right now we got the first button working. We'll talk about the second button and then getting a score. I'll see you guys next time.